Hey folks, I'm Dave with Dagon Laser Craft. Today we're going to do a, a novice level project, which is to take a photo of an old recipe and engrave it to a cutting board. To do this, we'll use Inkscape, which is a free vector graphics software. We'll also use Lightburn laser cutting software, which is not free but has a 60 day trial. And then we'll use the Xtool D1 Pro 40 watt laser. Let's get right to it. Okay, so here we are in Inkscape, which is a 100% free vector graphics creation software. Uh, you can get that by going to inkscape.org, and I'll, I'll put a uh, link down in the description. So what we want to do is take a photo, uh, in this case a photo of an old biscuit recipe, and turn that into a vector graphic. It's a scalable vector graphic, which is a dot .svg. And do that so we can use it in Lightburn, uh, the laser cutting software, and be able to send that over to the, to the laser. So to do that, you want to go up to File, down to Import, there's probably some shortcuts to this, but I, I don't know what they are. Uh, maybe I'll figure it out later. So go to wherever you've uh, you've got your photo. Here's our photo. You'll have uh, this parameter box pop up. And up to this point, I've not had to change anything. Here, I've just clicked OK. Uh, there may be situations in the future where I have to change it, so you can play around with that and see if uh, there's something you need to do. So we're clicking OK, and here is our photo. And notice the, the background on it is still white, and we want to get rid of that background and just have the lettering left. So pull it over to your canvas, and be sure it's uh, selected. Now sometimes you can uh, you can just click and it'll select. Other times you have to go around it and let it select. But either way, be sure it's uh, selected and then you need to go up to the top to path and then trace bitmap. You'll see it pop up over on the right. Now if your photo has a uh, some speckles on it or maybe some wrinkles maybe you took a took a photo of an old family recipe that's been in a drawer or in a box for a long time and you need to clean it up a little bit you can do that in the parameters up top and if you do then you'll have to go down to the bottom and click update preview if not if there's nothing to change and you're satisfied with what shows up here you can just click apply so then go back over to your photo, and you can see that your white background is gone. Your photo is still there with the white background, and you've separated the two. So over on the one with the white background, you want to right-click and delete. And it doesn't delete it from your computer, it just deletes it off of the, uh, the canvas. Go back over and grab your new vector file. Go up to the top to file. Click and do save as. And then go back. It'll put it wherever you can find it, wherever you want to put it. Uh, And you will notice that the uh, file extension is .svg, Scalable Vector Graphic, and save. And the reason it's uh, scalable is it, it doesn't have pixels. It's not like a it's not like a photo anymore. So you can grab the corners and you can stretch this out as big as you want to stretch it. Could make it the size of the side of a building and it 
it won't distort like a photo will. Photo pixelates. So, okay. So now we have our SVG saved. And we need to get into light burn and process that and send it on over to the laser. Be back in just a moment. Okay, so here we are in Lightburn, and uh, this is a uh, laser cutter software. It's not free, but they do have a 60-day uh, free trial. And then beyond that, you can get a lifetime license for, I believe, $60 now. Uh, they get they provide frequent updates. It's a, it's a great software so far. A lot to learn, and uh, I'm working on it. So to get this vector file imported, you can either go up to the top left to file, and import or go to the toolbar click import okay go find your SVG file and remember it's a, it's a scalable file so you can stretch it by grabbing the corners you can stretch it out you can stretch it down I'm going to turn it this way to orient it to my laser. Stretch it out to the size of my board. And I'll probably have to do some more on that. But uh, the board I'm using is a 8mm uh, uh, thick bamboo board. It's about 10 inches by 12 inches. And once your, your vector file is selected, go down to your palettes. I believe that's what they're called. Uh, I typically, you can use any one of these as long as you adjust it to what you know uh, you need it to be. And once you get really familiar with using Lightburn, you can set these up for the many different layers that light burn is capable of. I typically use 01, the blue, for a uh, fill. And I've got a preset of a uh, speed of 100 millimeters per second and a power of 50 because I know that's what it'll need because of doing a uh, materials test in light burn. And if you get light burn, I suggest you do that. You can uh, do it with any material that you, you plan to engrave on and to help you get a good start point for your speed and power. I recently uploaded a video for a materials test on slate, a slate coaster, and I'll drop a link in the bottom. And the, the steps to set up the materials test will be the same no matter what the material is. So, okay, so now we have our vector imported. We have our fill set. Now this this can be fill, line, offset fill. In this case we won't fill. So now we just need to position the laser and in my case I'm using uh, absolute coordinates. So yours may be different. For me I just go over on light burn to the uh, laser positioning icon. Click that and then I can uh, just go to the canvas on the outer edge of the graphic and click and my laser will move to that position. So now what I need to do is go to the um, go to the laser itself, uh, get my board squared up in the bed, come back and click this frame button over on the, the right. And make sure I'm, I've got it positioned where I want it to be. And then after that, click the start button and send it to the laser to uh, engrave on the board. Okay, so let me get set up uh, with the laser and we'll be back. Okay, so here we are with the, with the board set up in the laser bed. Got it squared up, got it secured. Uh, you notice I don't use this... Uh, protective shield very often. I do wear safety glasses. I just suggest you be very careful. But it allows me to uh, frame easily, easier. I can see the laser head and know where it's going. 
So we're going to hit a frame and see if it needs any more adjustment. Okay, just a little bit. And since I'm using absolute coordinates, at least with this laser, the X2 D1 Pro 40 watt, I can move this laser head with my hand and just hit frame again. Okay, I think uh, thinks that that's good for us to to send it over. Uh, it's going to get a little loud. I've got to turn on the uh, the exhaust fan and the uh, air assist. Here we go. Okay, well there it is, all done. Looks pretty good. Uh, I think we can make it look better with uh, a little white vinegar and a soft cloth or a favorite shirt that can't be replaced and cut up and repurposed as a soft cloth. Just put a little bit on the uh, rag cloth and wipe gently and it'll take off some of that residue. Don't wipe really hard down into the lettering or it'll, it'll take that take that out. You can get that residue off and then later on put a coat of uh, Put a coat of polyurethane on it and it'll bring that lettering out really good and it'll it'll look even better uh, if if this were on a soft wood it would help if you put a coat of urethane on it before uh, sending it to the laser and it'll it'll help this residue help you get that cleaned off a lot easier okay well there you have it she's done so here is a closer look at the finished product. It turned out pretty good. Uh, some of the letters are a little distorted. A couple of the S's and stuff like that, but you can make it out. And it's not really about making biscuits. It's about engraving a photo of a recipe to a cutting board. And we accomplished that. Uh, if, you were, if you took a photo of someone's handwriting you would have to work at it a little harder in Inkscape and Lightburn, but you can get there. Uh, well, that's it. We done good. Okay, folks. We created a vector graphic using Inkscape from the photo of an old recipe. We then processed that file through Lightburn laser cutting software, and then we engraved it to a cutting board using the Xtool D1 Pro 40 watt laser. That's a pretty good way to preserve some treasured family memories. I hope you learned something from the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Please come back often to check for new videos, and we'll see y'all next time. Thank you very much.